friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day one of my 2021 Valentine card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Avery L's Frenchy stamp set. So I've stamped my images out with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth White cardstock and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start by coloring in the white parts of my little French Bulldog and I started with C0 and C1. I wanted to keep him nice and light so I used that C1 to lay in a little bit of shadow and then I'll grab that C0 and begin to blend that out and kind of fade that gray tone into the white. But I ultimately decided that it wasn't quite enough contrast for me. So I pulled in the C3 and I'm going to add a deeper shadow with that marker. But I'm doing very thin little lines. I don't want to get too heavy handed with this because I don't want him to look like a gray bulldog. I want him to look white. I just want there to be enough contrast on the edges that he has a bit of dimension to him and that it really lifts him off the page. So when I blended out the C3, I just used the C0. I skipped over the C1 since that area was already nice and saturated. And then for his black areas, I'm using C3, C5, and C7. So I use the C7 first to add a bit of shading on the bottom edges of his ears and up on that big black spot that's going to be covering his eye. And then also on the spots on his hindquarters as well. And then I'm going to start to blend that out with the C5. Just filling in those tiny little spots because there wasn't much room for the three shades there. And then I will add the C3 to be my highlight. So the darkest color that I used on the white places becomes my highlight shade on his darker places. So that just keeps everything looking nice and consistent. Now I did just refill my markers so they're super juicy and that C3 really pushed that C5 back a bit so I went back with that C5 and flicked in a little extra color and then just smoothed out those transitions. While I have these markers out I'm also going to use them to color in the little wheels of my wagon. So I used the C7 on the bottom a little bit more toward the right hand side and then I blend it up with the C5 and I'm going to finish towards the top left with that C3. And I did go back in with a little more of that C5 off screen. So then I'm moving on to the actual wagon and for that I'm using R20, R22 and R24. I wanted to do like the idea of the little red wagon, but I didn't want to have a bright red on today's card because it wasn't going to match the pattern paper that I'm using. So I went with more of like a soft cherry pinkish tone. So I used that R24 for the shadows, but I made sure to really blend that out with the R22 and then the R20 is going to be my lightest. And then I went back with that R22 and flicked a little bit more of that mid-tone in. And then I'm also going to use these three shades to color in the little Frenchie's collar. So as I mentioned, I just did some marker maintenance. It took me several hours because I'd been putting it off for such a long time while doing my holiday card series but it was so worth it. My markers are working better than ever right now and they're just such a pleasure to color with again. I don't have to work hard for the blends. So definitely recommend doing regular maintenance and I do have a video on that which I will link in the cards. So I moved on to R00, R11, and R20 and I used those shades to color in the little dog's nose and the inside of his ears. And now I'm doing this little pile of hearts. I wanted them all to be just the same. So I used the R20 as my darkest and I kind of followed the direction that I did with the wheels, just putting that shading a little bit more on the right hand side and keeping the highlight toward the top left. 
And the butterflies I wanted to keep pale, so I just used a little R20, flicked that in and let it fade into the white, and then I trimmed these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I'm going to create a mask by just adding a piece of post-it tape toward the bottom of that panel. And then I'm going to blend on some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink. So I'm trying to create a little sidewalk for my Frenchie to be uh, kind of pulling his little wagon across. So I'm just working my way up to that taped line. Then I will remove the tape and I'm going to reposition it over top of that sidewalk. It's not going to stay because the ink is wet there, so it's kind of preventing that tape from staying, but that's okay. I'm just gonna hold it in place so that I can blend on some more Distress Oxide ink above. And I'm going to use Speckled Egg, which is a newer color that uh, Ranger has released. It's got a lot of gray tone in the blue, which I think is gonna work well with my pattern paper. I was worried that just a blue sky would kind of look jarring um, since there's no blue in the pattern paper. But this Speckled Egg is kind of like a chameleon shade. It just works really well with a lot of different things. So I have sponged that on and kind of let it fade toward the top, um, leaving some white cardstock there. I'm going to add some little flicks of water using a paintbrush. So I'm going to just dip that into my water and it had a little bit of pink left over, but it was totally fine because I have pink in my uh, pattern paper and in my images as well. I'm also gonna splatter a little bit of that speckled egg um, on the background as well because I just wanted a little bit of texture in that background. Once that dried fully, I popped that into my Misty so that I could stamp my sentiment and I'm going to use Versafine Onyx Black ink because a lot of inks don't like to stamp over top of Distress Oxide inks, especially on the Bristol because it's such a smooth surface with that coating on it. But the uh, Versafine Onyx Black works great. So I stamped loads of love on that. And now I'm using my card base. It's Lawn Fawn Ballet Slippers cardstock. I'm stamping in Hippo ink to kind of go with my gray and pink theme here. And I did the other little French bulldog, the heart-shaped balloon, and the sentiment that said, ooh la la, as that was the only other one in the set that was kind of like related to love or um, Valentine's Day or whatever you wanna do. Um, so now I'm ready to use my pattern papers. I'm going back to my Simple Stories Cozy Days pattern paper, and I'm gonna look through my scraps because I know that I have some stuff that has pink and gray in here that might work well. So I pulled out these two prints, and I think they're gonna look really cute with these images. So I trimmed them down with the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Rectangle Stackables. I just put those together through my die cut machine, even though they weren't glued together, and that made them get cut out perfectly with that stitching detail lining up on all the edges. So I'm gonna grab my Tombow Mono Multi Glue and adhere the floral print down to my card base. You can see that that cardstock is almost a perfect match for the floral print on that gray pattern paper. And then I'll add my pink and gray and white plaid across the center. Just make sure that it's lined up nice and straight and smooth that down into place. Then I took my Sunny Studio Fancy Frames rectangle die and I die cut one of the smaller frames. It actually cuts the frame in two different sections. I'm gonna save that inner portion for another card and just use the outer portion of that smaller frame. And I'm going to add my Bristol panel right behind that and tape it into place with a little bit of scotch tape. And that's just because it's completely clear. And so if any of that tape would show in the gaps, you wouldn't really be able to see it. So I just secured that into place with one piece on each of the shorter ends and then two pieces on the longer ends. And I just made sure not to extend that beyond that scallop detail, otherwise, you know, you would see that. 
I added some scotch foam tape to the back of the panel. So I just peeled off those release papers and I'm going to line that up in the center of my card, pop it down. I didn't have it quite centered at first. It was a little bit shifted toward the right. So I just pulled that back up and I'm going to readjust until I'm happy with it. And then I'll just smooth that down. And now I can add in my images. So to get my little French Bulldog and the wagon lined up is going to be a tiny bit tricky because I want to make sure to have them spaced correctly on that scene and they need almost that entire inside of the frame to do it. So I added my liquid glue on the back of both of them and then kind of um, adhered them down almost at once. That way I could adjust if needed and make sure that they both have, there's the same distance between the edge of his tail and the white frame and then the edge of the wagon and the white frame. And that's what I really wanted. And then while that liquid glue is still wet, I also want to insert that pile of hearts into my wagon so I can get that kind of wiggled back behind there. And then I have my two little butterflies. So I'm gonna add one in that blank space over on the left. And then the other one, I was kind of trying to figure out where I wanted it to go, but ultimately decided to put it on the right of that wagon. I am adding some Stardust Stickles because I just love the way that it adds such a little pretty hint of sparkle. So I put it on the little Frenchie's collar and on the two butterflies. And I'm also going to add it to all of the hearts. And I just put it on the right hand side in the same place that I added my darkest shadow. That way it'll have the most color behind it to help it catch the light. I decided I wanted a little bit more pink in that background. So I decided to try to fake the splatter effect that I had done with the Distress Oxide inks. So I'm just adding some tiny little dots with my R20 marker and uh, kind of integrating a little bit more of that pink tone into that background scene. And I'm making sure to add some different size dots to also mimic that splatter effect just by pressing longer or shorter on that marker tip. So I felt like my card was still missing something. I needed another little image in that kind of empty space that I'll show you in a minute, but I decided to stamp and die cut the little ladybug image. So I just went back to the same uh, pink, pinky red combo that I used on the dog's collar and the wagon. I taped that die into place with a bit of post-it tape, ran it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6, and now I am going to adhere that over on the left-hand side of that pile of hearts. I just felt like that space below the sentiment needed something. So, um, and it also helps to have another item that is colored in that combo because it just kind of completes the visual triangle there with that uh, kind of brighter tone that is not in the pattern paper either. So he was a little bit fiddly to get situated where I wanted, so I just grabbed my little pokey tool. I never remember what that tool is actually called, but anyway, I used that to adjust him into place where I wanted him, and that is going to complete my card for today. So there you can see how all that stickles catches the light, and there's another peek at the inside of the card. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I post new videos every Monday and Friday, but I have occasional bonus videos as well. And I will have one of those this month. So make sure you've got that bell rung. If you're interested in any of the products that I use, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here is day one of the previous year of Valentine card series. So hopefully you can uh, check those out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.